Hello everybody, my name is Eric and this is going to be a quicker video about uh, something I've wanted to talk about for a while, malicious Chrome extensions. Now this one is absolutely devastating because uh, this is coming from a popular cryptocurrency Twitter account, Tree of Alpha, talking about how another popular user who I believe works for him uh, was hacked using a fake Chrome extension that impersonates a popular cryptocurrency website. Now remember, Chrome extensions are almost as bad. Actually, you know, my boy, I'm going to up that for you. I, I actually think Chrome extensions are probably more dangerous than applications because they're hiding in plain sight. And quite possibly the worst aspect of Chrome extensions is that most people on Chrome will be signed into Chrome. So if you're logged in and you were to install this fake agar trade extension, you could end up having it persist. Now, first of all, let's just take a look at the page. Now I've got this on a different Chrome profile because of course I'm not going to actually install it. We'll be looking at the code in just a second. So of course, one red flag is the English on this is quite questionable. Show live trades from exchanges on specific pair, filter noise, chant aggravated price, and play audio. Okay. And it does all of this. And almost all of the reviews are positive, but you can note pretty much all of them are from a long time ago, which is strange. Some of them are quite generic. Some of them are more clear. Now, given this has been around for so many years, and in fact has still not been taken down, that's just a bit concerning. Now, there's also a YouTube video promoting it. Now, unfortunately, YouTube got rid of dislikes, so we can't instantly see Online shop. what's going on here. And it pretends it's called the channel Agar Trade, even though it's not affiliated with it. Let's see if anyone has uh, complained. Nothing so far. And now, of course, we can go to agar.trade. Now, this is a legitimate site. I'm just going to show you what this uh, site does and why people uh, who are trading cryptocurrency might want it. So here you get the price of different cryptocurrencies. You can choose which ones you want. Uh, oh, no, you, you do it on a different thing. You go to the search, and you can see all the different exchanges. And then this is basically a dashboard. And you can change the... You can say maybe you want to see a minute chart instead of a second chart. You see all the different things people are doing, and you can also see big trades, and that's what a lot of people use it for. So that's this site, which is perfectly uh, legitimate. Unfortunately, the extension is unaffiliated. So uh, one benefit of how Chrome extensions work is that they are always open source, which means we can simply get an idea. Now, of course, they might try and be sneaky about it, but we can get some ideas. So. The background.js is most likely where the stealer is going to live. Chrome.cookies.get. Uh, cookie value equals cookie value. So this is looking at your cookies. And here we're adding a listener. So basically what the code of this extension will do is it will get your cookies on every single website that you visit and it's probably going to send that to an external command and control server, which is this server. And it seems this is where the data is actually going. agartradeextension.com slash statistics collection slash index.php. Now, of course, we can go back to our browser and we can take a look and see. Now, this probably isn't going to respond to a get, but it may respond to a post. Now, if we go back to the code, we can maybe get an idea of where the, the post request is is going. So, oh, and here they're trying to trying to make it sound like they're not doing anything fishy. They've even commented this code. Now, let's see if we can see any more post request. request. Now, this might actually be the piece. This is the actual agar draggable script. So the malicious functionality lives in the background.js. So it does actually work. And I'm you can see more about how it works. So the next thing, okay, and here's another red flag. Uh, there would be no reason for an extension like this to have this permission. So now let's just try running it. And I'm going to show you a trick so you can see what your Chrome extension is really doing. So we're going to install this on an unrelated browser profile. That's why it's not risky to do. Once again, don't try this at home, but if you must try this at home, this is how you do it. 
So we add this onto the burner one, and then we go to manage extensions. We turn on developer mode, and that's going to enable us to open up the background page. Now here we can go to the network and we can actually see if it's sending any requests. I'm just gonna drag that off to my other screen and go to some different pages and see if it does. Now we can go, say we go to Okay, and now we open the extension and now uh, it doesn't seem to actually be doing anything useful, but this is the, uh, the one that went to the extension page. Uh, your browser doesn't support iframes. My browser absolutely supports iframes. And now we can go back to, and here is the hit onto the other page. Now let's see what we actually sent. Uh, data binary, okay, let's see the, oh, here we go. Here is the payload of the stealer. So we got HTML form data, and these are these are my cookies. Uh, we can see the thing that I used to get the CRX and a few other domains. Now, because they haven't taken any steps to obfuscate the code, it's pretty obvious how this whole thing works. And we can also, uh, via Chrome, actually find out where this was called. Uh, that it was called this jQuery. Actually, let's just validate this is in fact. No, this, I think this is. Uh, yeah, no, this isn't a modified. I wasn't sure. Is that another thing you could do is you could hide the payload. But here we go. And we got this site. And that's actually where this is going. And we can just triple check. Yep, it's a post request. And here we could see some information about how it's done. Now, of course, now that we've gotten this information, I'm immediately going to get rid of this extension because I don't want it to do anything. Uh, so that's just going to be all for now. This is going to be a relatively quick video. I hope it was interesting. Uh, so what you should do, you'd be really, really careful. I would say, well, really, if you're watching this video on a computer and you're at your computer, just right now, go to Chrome extensions, check every single one of them. Is this something you use? Is this something you trust? Uh, double check. If, if it's something like, if it says it's from something that you trust, uh, just go and double check that it actually is. Check, go to their website, see, do they mention having an extension? If not, it might be an imposter. And also, if you really, if you have an extension that you occasionally use, what I would do is I would just go and create a Chrome profile separate from your main one and install it there. That way it's not running 24-7, potentially exfiltrating your data. I hope this video was helpful. That's all for now.